welcome everybody to our Wednesday Q&A. Uh, we're watching the equity open here in the NASDAQ futures. Um, we are between a couple key levels that, uh, you know, per our plan we're watching. Uh, one is a, a prior naked point of control here at 55. We do have a gap that we have established um, after the uh, the really large range day yesterday that that, that effectively shut off <clears throat> the downside auction that we've been in. So now we're going into kind of a balancing behavior. We're back to the most traded price of the last, uh, basically the rolling week. And uh, so we're in a little bit of a place of indecision. We're gonna kind of wait to see what they do. Um, we're inside of Globex range. So um, a lot of it's gonna hinge on what, where we ultimately make the move from the 7227. If we can, if we can break below this zone, um, we actually have a nice, nice potential move back to close the gap to like 7146 uh if we if we hold above and get 55 you know we could we could chop in this area if we trade above the first hour above 55 we've got um another level at 7281 to look for so um right now the auction is expecting let's let me go to my Right now we're expecting about 91 points to, uh, for the session. So uh, 7177 would get you to 7255. That would hit the expected move of the product. Um, we, we know that from Im the implied volatility and what we see in the options markets. So we'll see what they, what they wanna do at the moment. The sellers are in control. Um, so with that, let's, let's, we're gonna look over here at crude oil real quick. So crude oil has uh, oil inventory report at 10.30 Eastern. So a little bit uh, less than an hour away from now. And we, there, there's a, a trade that we look for on inventory report that we call a second move, okay? So I wanna walk you through this trade. So you can see right now we're developing, we're developing the initial balance, the first hours of, of trade right here. You can see the Globex range. Um, we will, we will ex likely extend this. And okay, there's about, a, on any trading session, there's a 97%. If you go back a thousand trading sessions, there's, you know, 90, 970 of them, we extend the initial balance range. We trade outside of that. When you have an inventory report or some type of binary event like that, um, that's that's when you can actually see, you know what, we may test the short side here. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go get 16. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so let's look quick, 20 in 22 out 15. Um, I'm gonna look to, I'm gonna look to reload here. I think it's through this 70, cause we still got the gap. I think it's through 7204. Then we'll look for rallies up towards 7227 for the move to 7144 and, and the gap close. Let's see what they do, but they gotta they gotta keep the sellers coming in. Oh yeah. So we're making the push. So you can see we're coming right back here to this Globex node. Expect them to pause a little bit right there. So what I'm gonna be looking for, is I'm gonna be looking for opportunities up into this area. You know, we've got some, we've got some selling, we've got a selling base here. And I wanna see this hold. I could use that as risk to establish and you know, targets are back, are down this way. We'll see what happens if they give us the opportunity. I'm not, I'm not jumping on this. I want to, I want to pull back. But the, the order flow, 
<clears throat> order flow in the in the RTH session is to the sell side. So sellers are stepping up in the session, although the overall order flow is still positive, <clears throat> given the gap. And this is kind of tough when you have a gap. Um, you can have you, you know the, you don't what you don't know you don't know is if that is that selling um, does it take control or not? Obviously, we close the gap then we're gonna have more selling control, but I do I do like what I'm seeing here. So again, we did we did seven points so far on that first break. And, and guys, what I was looking for there was I saw the you know the initial move, they held and then they broke again. Um, so entry entry right here on the break, initial stop would have been here. Um, and just got us back to the to the VWAP. Now I'm looking for looking to establish a better position. Still an A period here. Okay, well, while we're waiting for that, of course, as soon as I'll start talking about it, we'll, <clears throat> they'll keep going. Opportunity is not, is not lost. There's gonna be opportunities, I think, to get this. So the second move, so after the first hour of trade, which there's a 97% chance you'll take that. So on a, on a binary event, be it an inventory report, being a crop report, being an FOMC meeting. So you look for a first move outside of this range. Okay, um, wherever we extend after the release, that's the first move. And then do they come back through? That's what we call the second move. And, and behaviorally, here's what's happening. So, so these machines, the desks and such, they're, they, they're programmed based on whatever the release is to do, take some type of position. And then there's also retail that will jump on top of that. So like say, for example, if we come out today and there's an inventory glut, so the inventories are higher than expected, you know, every that would prices drop, so everybody goes lower, and then that could be the first move. In fact, I would love that. I would love for us to go lower first because we have untested Globex lows, and auctions lo often do not make their low um, in Globex. They they typically make that in the RTH session. So you know, I want to see. I would love to see these get tested. We've actually got levels down here to watch. Um, come on, Nasdaq, give me a pullback. Come on, dude. There you go. Um, so I'd love to see him go down here. What this does is if, if, if this first move doesn't get acceptance, if they don't continue to participate at those prices, that's at, you're putting yourself at risk. Also, when you look at where you are in the composite profile with the most of the volume above you, value above you, if you don't get follow through, you're at risk because you're running out of participants. So then this person can get squeezed. Well, the last person in to a move is the first person to, to get out. So if, if you're short on that move, you don't, don't get follow through, well then what you do is you cover, you become a quick buyer, right? And then that can feed more buying because the auction knows it can't go in that direction lower. And then the, the real squeeze happens when they get back through the IB. So what we'll be looking today is we're gonna be, again, we're gonna be looking for you know, where are we after the number? Can we push lower? Does that fail? Do we come back through? Then we've got really cool targets higher to be long and we would defend the low of the initial balance. So that's a, that's a move that, that works in, you know, any product where you have an, a binary event during the session. So at FOMC, uh, WASDA, crude oil, um, where you know it's in the middle of the session, it's not at the end, it's not right on the open. So you know I don't, I'm not, I don't use it on enough non-farm payrolls uh, with the bonds on uh, Friday, and just just those three products. And again, you have to have the second move. Those those days, those binary events can be very violent, and they can be. So I you know definitely suggest you practice this <laughs> a lot. And if if there's no if there's no second move, there's no trade. It's that simple. Okay. So if they don't if you don't if you don't trap those participants and know that the auction can't go that way, 
well then you know there's no trade and uh, we don't take it okay so that's that's uh one thing i wanted to cover that somebody had asked me about um another question was you know finding finding long-term levels uh of reference and and how do you how do you find those levels looking at the historical auction and uh here i just have a have a weekly these are weekly bars of the s p's you can see obviously this this large move that we've made recently i'm going to change this to a daily real quick all right and i'm going to set an alert because i want to see us pull back to like 15 and then i'm going to turn it away i don't want to see it um okay so the es one one first thing is to is to identify uh a range of prices that you want to look at. So here, here is a um, you know a range that we've essentially been in. This we would call this a bracket of trade, right? Where basically from you know, 2950s down to 2550s has, has contained the trades since I mean basically all year. Uh, we you know we did have the little dip um, below, but you know since the beginning of 18, this has been the range. So actually, almost a year and a half. Um, so when you when you see a range like this, that's that's something that you can profile and that and get some levels on. So I'm going to go and go from the the beginning of this bracket. And I'm going to go profile. Um, I'm going to stop here. I'll I'm going to tell you why I'm going to stop here in a second. But this gives you a view into. Um, what's the historical inventory been and so then now as we're auctioning back lower where are levels that we're likely to impact and i if you've been following us on twitter and and you know been looking at things we've been talking about um this we talked about this 2730 being a key key level for the auction to defend okay well, here's why that that 2730 level is the most traded price of this entire bracketed range. That's where most buyers and sellers agree on value and they show up together. So, I mean, that right there is going to be a, a significant downside reference and, and led to this, you know, kind of big responsive move. And it's one to keep watching and carry forward. If we can't hold 2730, well, guess what? Then the next big node is here at 2675. Um, now, to the upside, where we where might we find resistance going back up? Well, if I go and I look at where we've been most recently from the, the last move, this 2862 area is a significant level to the upside. So that's one to watch to the upside where we might find that actually might be the place, you know, this this is the you know small bottom might that's a place that I might look to see if sellers step back in. And rotate us back again towards 2730, and then that could be the next push lower. It could also be that we get up to 2870, and that moves us up to this node at 28, and then we're back to new highs. Right? That's that's all possible. Also, we just we just don't know. But what we do know, and what the profile does allow us to do, is it allows us to find levels that we might be interested in. Oh, there he is. Thanks for raising your hand, JP. Just going through some submitted questions here. Hey, Professor, what's up? I'm sorry. Hey. I'm already... Oh, no worries. Um, so we're going to go back over here to the side. They did not pull up enough. But man, come on. They're going to close yeah, this gap no. and not give us enough of a pullback to get in no. again. And they hit the breakout level, too. Dang it. Come on, guys. So right now I'm kind of waiting for B period. Um, see if they can pull back to VWAP up here. You know, I would, again, want another push up here before they make the move. Now let's let's talk about this. Like the the what if I miss the trade? Okay, because this happens. This happens. The what what if I miss the trade? Well, what if they don't give me a pullback and they get to my target down here at 7142? Well, guess what? That's a place that if I don't have a trade, I can look and if this level holds as I expect. I can look for the responsive long back in the opposite direction. So haven't completely missed out. We did get that initial push, um, initial move, but. 
Yeah, if you miss it, sometimes you just got to let it go. I mean, you just got to let it go. Yeah. I, there's something I tell everybody in the Slack channel is that listen, and, and if you've been around trading long enough, you'll know this is that there's going to be thousands and thousands of trades out there. You don't need that one trade. If you think this is the only gap close trade out there, <laughs> got news for you. Yeah. Um, there's going to be thousands of them available to you and ones that are a lot easier to get into. One trade's not going to meet, make your, your career. Okay. Right. Now it can make your day. I get it. It can't even make your week, but it's not going to make your career. But I promise you one trade can end your career. Yeah. Okay. So don't chase it, please. Yep. If there's yeah. anything you can learn from me or today, that would be it at that point. Yeah. Force, force the auction to come to you. I mean, that's, we can control yeah. risk. We control how much we risk. We control the prices that we're willing to be active at. And we can control the conditions upon which we'll put the trade on. Those, <clears throat> that's what we can control. We can't control what direction it's going to go. Unless <laughs> I was talking to a buddy the other day, he's got an IPO stock and uh, we were, you know, I don't really like the price that he's got it at. We're trying to do something and maneuver around it, but he's so large in his position that he would move the book. <laughs> he has, really? Oh yeah. He's got more shares. He has more shares than the, the total daily volume. Wow. So, I mean, if he, if he like wanted to liquidate his position, he would, he would just absolutely tank the stock. Oh my gosh. Um, How big? What was it trading at? Uh, I will not disclose. Pennies on pennies? No, no, it's it's trading dollars. But oh, was it? Okay. Um, oh, come on, gang, pull back! Don't do this to me. Uh, another question that was submitted that I want to make sure I cover was um and th this is this is this is a constant one like how to how to take the trade and st how to take and stay that stay in the trade with market profile okay well so one one of the ways that you you take a trade and stay in it is that you define you def you define and know a target okay so let's let's talk about right now i i actually have a target i have a target i have the 7145 okay so that that's my that's the level that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the gap close. I'm looking for the singles to be taken out. I'm looking for that 71.45. So then, you know, the next question is, what am I willing to risk to get that, get that price? And, you know, I, I want to look for some type of trigger, which is why I'm looking for some, you know, type of move higher, some responsive move higher that fails that then I can get in and establish a stop. And then I'm staying in the trade till either I hit my target or I get stopped out. Like that's, that's how you stay in it. What we often find is that traders don't stay in the trade because they have not defined, they haven't defined a target and they're, they, they are, they're constructing their reason to be in the trade based on some type of price action trigger. Well, I can find price action triggers all day long connecting that to an opportunity or reasonable belief why the, you know, price will go to a certain target um, is something altogether. And so once, once you're going through, and this, this, we talk about these four questions that we encourage everybody to, to um, ask and answer before you put on a trade. So the first one is what's the opportunity. And that's not, the opportunity isn't a price trigger. The opportunity is there's something structural in the auction. There is, like right here, the opportunity is to be short because we're moving away from that 7227 zone. Uh, we've got naked, untested points of control lower. We've got single prints in yesterday's profile. Like that to me is opportunity. Then the next is what am I willing to risk to establish a position toward that opportunity? Like that, I'm looking for that. Where Where is that? And I'm, I'm like, hey, I, I see this initial selling. I wanna see some weak buying that fails that then I can get into the trade, which maybe we're getting that, maybe we'll see. Um, and then yeah. what, would what would tell me that I'm right? Well, I'm gonna continue to see sellers control and dominate the auction. And, and right now the sellers have, you know, the order flow during the session. You can see that the change in the cumulative Delta over here in this other chart, it went from positive in Globex to now negative in the session. So sellers are in control. They've almost closed the gap. So they're working on the gap close. Um, 
you know, what other things I would I want to see? I want to see the gap close. I want to see you know, seller's control. What would I not want to see? What would tell me that I'm wrong? Well, obviously, if it goes through my stop, <laughs> that's that that would tell me that I'm wrong. If I see some unexpected buying order flow, um, if I see us back above that 7227, those are things that would tell me that I'm wrong. I need to get out of the trade. And it, and actually, if we if we move back up to 7227 and don't find sellers then my, the opportunity to get back to that 7145 is off the table. So, you know, all that to say, getting, getting to a place where you can stay in the trade, again, starts with, it starts with an opportunity. What, what is the, the thesis for why the auction is going to go and test something? And, and a great place to look for that is, is structure. <clears throat> okay, next question that we had was, um, we had a question about uh, trading options with the profile. So I want to walk, walk you through a trade that we took. Um, we're still in a little bit of it. But I want to kind of show you this trade. <clears throat> so this is uh, a couple 30, of good ones recently. Yeah, we had a couple of good ones. So this is 30 year treasury bonds here. And we had, we had identified opportunity in the treasuries because we had come back to a composite note. So like this note here, you know, how do I get this node? So let's talk about that first. Let me go back um, and look at the long-term chart here. And when Josh is saying long-term chart, we're really looking at long-term charts when we're establishing like on options trades. Uh, now, that doesn't mean you can't do a shorter term option trade off a smaller time frame. Yeah. Just not advised. For this, for this specific trade, it was a yeah. long-term. So yeah. uh, see this peak here in the auction, I'm gonna go all the way to the swing low and you're gonna find this big node. Okay, so kind of like the 2730 in the ES, this is, this, this is a zone that was interesting and that you know I was expecting the auction to at least slow and given where we had come most recently, that could be a place where we could see some sellers step in and if they did, I wanted to establish an opportunity. You can see that they did and broke below that level. So we put on, uh, so we put on a, um, a call credit spread and JP, you want to walk through this trade? What exactly is a call credit spread? Um, call credit spread, we would take this spread, it's two trades. Okay. And uh, we would um, buy a call, sell a call above the market, which gives you a credit. Now, if you're not familiar with options, it's a little bit more deeper than that. And then, so what we do is we create a credit. And there's two types of, of, of options that you'll have, either a debit or a credit. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna debit. construct the trade here in the option chain so you can see this trade. Yeah, so what we do is we have calls on the left-hand side, puts on the right-hand side. So in the traditional form of a call, when you buy a call, you expect it to go up. When you sell a call, you expect it to go down. It's, that's where you're, you're, I hate to say bet, that's a bad word, but that's what you're looking for the market to do. So we, instead of doing just a single call, we do a spread. Now, why do we do that? Well, there's a couple different ways, uh, reasons. But what it does is it, it, it one, it controls risk. Two, it um, gives us, you know, what we want is theta decay. Okay, it's de the decay of the premium to come into our pocket. All right, so we were pretty well extended, and so above the market, um, we go ahead and we create a call spread. Josh, you want to just create that yeah, call I just, spread? I just say I'm putting some alerts here. Just okay. because <clears throat> we're coming back to this zone in the in the in queue where this could potentially trigger the short i'm i'm interested so i'm going to kind of we're going to kind of watch that see if they can need a little bit more time um okay so here's here's the trade so we're in the 150 uh 156, 157. That's what we were. So I, I did the 156. You did 60, wasn't it? 156, 60 is what you did. You did a four four dollar spread. Did the 156. So I sold the 156, and then I bought. I need to increase this. And then I bought the 160. All right, so let me 
collapses back down. So you can see here, you, you're, you're, selling, you're selling one, you're buying another. What that does is that reduces your, your buy power essentially, but you can see it creates a credit. Now I'm, I'm sure this is really small, but that's a, it's a 19 uh, tick credit. So from a, you know, max profit is on a 10 lot would be 2,900. If you took it, now we, we're in it, uh, my cost basis now is 45. So the, I mean, this trade is already <laughs> about done. Yeah, I've already I've already taken mine off. So, but you can see the buy power effect here, and um, and what's cool is these give you the max loss uh, up front. You know what they are, but it's it's a way to to be efficient in your capital. You're not naked in a position. You do have some defined risk around that, and then you also, um, oh yeah, this looks good. Come on, hang on a second. Okay. If we get another five minute low, we can rock and roll and then we can defend this tw this uh, 2450 area. This is gonna be good, I think. Come on, gang. Um, but th but it's what's, and then what's cool is in terms of like, how do you know what to do with the trade? Well, in that trade, as long as we stay below 150, the trade's still good. So on the, on the runners that I've got, as long as we stay below 155 in the bonds, trade's good, I can hold it and, you know, collect that uh, premium going into uh, expiration. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to collect the premium. So we want the price to stay below that. Now there's also the, it's the price with the premium on the deal is where our break even is. Um, if price were to just all of a sudden jump up, if we go back to that chart, if you got a second. Yeah. ZB chart. So if price would have rocketed back above that 55 area and start heading towards the 56, we'd probably need to cover that. Okay, so in, in this case, it didn't. We, you know, we, we had a pretty good idea that this wasn't coming down. It was a very, um, the risk was really defined on this thing and we, we liked our opportunity. So we took the option up there as a, a spread. Um, it was, a, again, a call spread and well, we pretty much had everything we needed out of by Tuesday. So we established it pretty quickly on Monday and, and took it off on Tuesday. So it was a really good trade, matter of fact. Um, and then we did another one on the beans a few weeks back. Um, the beans were just, <laughs> they were falling out of bed. They made decade lows, 10 year lows, right? And we did the same type of structure, just it was a simple, but we did it on the other side. We did a, a put credit spread, okay? Again, we sold the put credit spread. So what does that mean? That means that when we sell a put, we're looking for it to go up and we just turned it into a spread like what Josh said. So anyway, that yes, the, the answer to your question is you can use the profile to help you do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's exactly what we did. And we do that every day and we look for opportunities that are, matter of fact, we have gold that's looking pretty sweet this morning. We start getting away too far. In other words, markets when they're stretched, so people use Bollinger Bands and they use you know, Keltner channels and they use uh, other things like deviation, um, some type of, of deviation, um, whether it be one or two, uh, three standard deviations out. Um, when the markets get to those levels, they're looking for either a pause or some type of reversion back to the mean. Uh, mean can be um, a VWAP, mean could be a 21 day moving average, whatever the case may be. Um, when that happens, you know, that's the opportunity. Go. Yep, there they go. Um, that's the opportunity we look for. But with the profile, we also look for the five day and the 20 day. When we, we, we get too far away from that, that's like being extended too far and we look for opportunity to come back to those things. So yeah, it's a great, it's a great thing. So we run in our Slack channel, we run um, a spreadsheet that's updated all the time. Your long goal will target. Oh, nice MK. Very nice. Yes. Those are good targets. 13. I have a target of 1360. So you're good. So actually I'll be pulling mine off at 1359. So close that gap. Let's go. Come on, push it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're going to get it here. They're going to take out that 86. It'll be real quick here. Yeah, there's not there's not excess in the contracts down there. No, there's not. They're gonna wipe them out here. So yeah, no, they may pop it before they wipe it out again. So oh boys, take it out. Okay. 
nice. I'm I'm back short gang and, and my stop is uh, 25. I'm this this excess candle right here. And again, I'm looking for 71.44. So in terms of a risk reward, you know, this is the target. Here's the stop. I entered on the break. And I'll 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 look for opportunities up till here to, you know, I can increase and add risk <clears throat> unless we get back above this and negate some of this. But I like it. Me like it as well. I like it. I look it's looking good. Yeah, they're they'll get through there. I mean, now if they just poke it down there for a couple ticks, they may do that too. But I'm I'm looking for them to sort of push it a little bit harder. Yeah. Um JP was just talking about this, uh, this spreadsheet that helps us identify some of these opportunities. So this is a, a spreadsheet that we publish every morning that just kind of gives us some relationship of price to value across a, a number of products. And so, for example, gold is on the, on the radar for a short. Uh, it doesn't mean it, it triggers uh, bonds still as well. Um, feeder cattle, hogs, potential longs, platinum. So let's just look at some of those products and, um, and see what opportunity exists there. Let's see here. <clears throat> um, so what was one of those was, let's look at gold. So they're, we're looking for the move back here to 1329 is would be the target. Uh, we actually do have, um, we actually do have a potential trigger. So let's see here. I like I like this selling big selling right here. Um, if they could make if they could make new lows, then I could use the top. I could use thirteen forty two as risk to be short for this move to thirteen thirty. Um, that's a little that's a little tight for me to be interested to do that from an option side. Uh, typically, we'd like to see them a lot more divergent from the weekly value to get there. I'm gonna look at feeders. Let's see. Hey, thank. Um, yeah, no, we do look at low volume nodes. Um, those are pauses we call them, and sometimes they do turn them around. There's no doubt about it. Those are thin spots that we look to get cleaned up. Um, and here's, here's a great example. So here's lean hogs. I think uh, no, we wouldn't be trading June. Um, looking at July hogs. And that one's not as attractive. Okay, but let, let's look. We'll look at the June hogs because this is kind of what I like to see. So I like to see the divergence between price and weekly value here. Um, in this case, it's about you know four dollar difference. And if I get if I see some buying stepping in that uh, shuts off the selling control, then I could use that as my risk. There's my target, and then you know the duration trade we can const construct the um, the option trade works works pretty good. So back to what I was saying, thing. Um, uh, yeah, we use low volume nodes. Um, we watch them as thin spots to get cleaned up. Um, and they can, yes, they can stop and turn around from there. There's no doubt about it. Um, but typically if there's a thin spot there, what we mean is singles is a thin spot. That's typically when we get low volume nodes. If that's the case, then we, um, you know, we'll look for a cleanup down there and then possibly a pause and then a, a turnaround. Uh, 218 overnight balance consolidation consider. Yeah, definitely MK. So, and anybody, you know, we're, we've been answering some questions that were sent in to us. So if you guys have questions right now, feel free to pop them in here. These are great questions, by the way. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And I'd, I'd love to know, you know, our, I mean, I'm assuming these are products that you also trade, but if there's other products that you trade a lot, um, let's look at those charts. Let's, let's figure out what to do with those. And, uh, and go from there. We're just looking at some, they're continuing to, to add to the sell side down here. So it's it's increasing the probability that we're gonna see this gap close. And oh, when I said single, when we <clears throat> talked about single print, so you can see this zone right here inside of yesterday's profile, 
where we basically just traded those prices in one 30 minute period. Do we, oh, that's a good question. So do we look at internals like the NICE tick advanced decline? I know JP does, I don't. I do, yeah, it's not my only thing. I just keep an eye on them. Um, advanced decline gives me sort of a, the see what the, the general wind is. Of course, Delta is always the, to me, remember, so advanced decline is over a market. Um, I, I like to look at Delta because it's over the specific um, um, product that we're trading. Okay. So I, I'll lean on Delta, but keep an eye on advanced decline. Ticks is, I, I look for ticks just to see what's going on. We have real um, participation in, in the market today. Um, in other words, you know, are we seeing higher ticks all across the board or are we, are we seeing, you know, lower ticks? Like today, we haven't seen a tick over 500 today. So today, eh, I mean, this is good selling. We'll probably, um, well, did we fill the gap yet? Almost, here it comes. Um, so, um, so am I looking for monster moves today? Probably not, I haven't seen any wild swings at this point, so. Do I look at high ticks, low ticks? Yeah, no, I don't. That's not my trigger. Come on, guys, go get that. Go get those singles. Oh, they went down there. One, one. I mean, the delta is strong. Like this is. Yeah, it is. That, that, again, it there's the, there's the reason right totally there. Totally out of school for them to to rally this thing with this this kind of internal delta. They're so close to the gap. Yeah. Like, 77. So that's a great question. Back to what we were talking about. So. Um, advanced declines pretty even across the board. I mean, 1326, 1369 across the board. Um, there's, you know, which way is it going? You know, it, it's so for for the NASDAQ, um, I'm going to lean on Delta on that pretty heavily. Yeah. Yeah, my, my two cents is, uh, so I mean, can, can it be, if, can ticks in, in 80 lines be effective? They certainly can. <clears throat> Like a lot of indicators, they can, they're they not directly correlated to the product. So the reason we look at volume and we look at delta is because that's directly correlated. That's what's happening. That's the behavior that's happening in that product. So it doesn't, it doesn't lie. It's not room for interpretation. It is, right? So like I can look and say with confidence, hey, we've done 273 contracts on the low today in the RT8 session. I can, I can see that we're accumulating volume at the bottom of this five minute period that should should exercise itself out like that's that's not exhausted yet and it should exercise itself out but that helps me make decisions um, i'm also we've you know we've have the we're developing value here which is in the lower end of the range um, we have strong selling in the session like this this is this is what we want to see here we go keep pushing Keep pushing. There they go. We got some singles down there too. You're talking about low volume areas. We got a couple singles um, down to 74. And then we have a couple below that from 68 down to about 57. So we have some singles we can clean up there. I think this could get down into that 59, 60 area. So yep. that would be a target for me down there. Um, yeah, matter of fact, 60 is it. I have something else down there at 60. So I will be wrapping this one up at 60 if we can get there. Yep. But I'm trailing, of course. 15, 20. Yeah, so in terms of like what I want to see behaviorally, like if I see moves higher, that's fine. I want to see them, but I don't want to see them canceling out any of the selling. I, I want to see strong. I mean, I, look look at this this one that... Watch watch this. Here, This one had 988... 1700 200 to the sell side that's a lot that that's not enough to take it out then they slam the door back with a big number again um this is not real strong so as long as i don't see like a massive buying delta number that cancels some of this stuff out like this is just a little bit of intraday profit taking some machines kind of going back and forth but steady as she goes And we're now increasing the odds we're going to take out this overnight low, getting those singles. So yeah, that 60 area is the nice, is the nice target. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, what what other products do you guys want to look at or uh, questions about indicators? 
low volume, high volume. We do, we do tend to build decisions around high volume areas. The reason for that is, so as, as, and as, you, as you've recognized, uh, low volume areas tend to reject on first test. So they're fast. They, they don't often give you time to make a decision. And I like to have the ability to make it the time to make a decision. So you can use a high volume area. You'll you always expect that you know, price will slow into a high volume area, especially the more data that's involved in that. So if, if, it's, if it's a high volume area that's based on like a weekly versus this one session, that weekly has, has greater weight, right? Because more participants had time to weigh in on that price. Uh, so we like we like to use those for decision levels. That's why that 7143 is a decision level today. And you know how I'll use that. I mean, obviously, I can use that as a target um, trailing, but I would expect that the auction, you know, is going to pause there. Now, it could could happen today that we get to 7142 and sellers don't stop and we go and get through these singles down here down to this next node at 7085. That that's would all, be amazing. That's all within the possibility today, and especially since we've rejected. We've current, we're currently rejecting off of this rolling weekly value. Um, so we got up here where there were sellers prior, the sellers stepped back again, they've closed the gap now. Um, again, this is all part of the balancing process. Yeah, so let me, uh, let me make a comment. Oh, here we go, come on, push, 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 push. Um, so let's talk about um, that question from Alex, which Alex, that's a great question again, That the, the nice tick uh, advancers and decliners. So let's let's think about this for a second. Let's not overcomplicate things because you can look at a lot of different things. Um, you can look at decline, advanced decline. You can look at tick. You can look at you know you name it. You can go. To, I mean, we got all kinds of different you know you know indicators and indexes we can look at to get clues and whatnot. Um, the one thing we got to can got to remember is that you know, we need, we're trying to figure out oh, as short term traders during the intraday is where's the market trying to go. And at this point, who's in charge? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, then you want to be on that side of things with them. You don't want to be fighting them at this point. Yep. All right. So we use things like Delta and we use things like volume to see where to have clues and to, to get ideas of where this is. We use high volume nodes to try to figure out where we could be going and then where we can defend against. Okay. Then the next thing is this, we have to get in the trade and manage our risk and we need to manage the risk before we get in the trade, which means we have to identify the risk. If you ever trade on a prop shop or ever be part of a prop shop ever, the first thing you're going to learn is your risk is going to be very tight and your, your winner is going to have to be very large. And I know that's the saying, yeah, you got to let your winners run and cut your losers short, right? That's the mantra in trading, but it really is true. And so many people fail in this industry. And here's the reason people fail. Is it because they got terrible psychology? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay. But the real reason they, they, they fail is that it's not that they're not right. It's not that they don't have good trade location and stuff like that. They take their trade profits way, way too soon. And then they let that loser get away from them because they don't want to lose. Okay. Which, you know, arguably is a psycho psychological deal. I don't want to lose. Right. right sure. But if we knock that, that let's say we knock that thing off real quick, if it starts going against us and we have our, our stop identified, but then we start pushing our trades, then, you know, we could have a trade like yesterday, beautiful reversal trade, mm -hmm. right? That, that was a big trade. If you caught a lot, yeah, there was 50 points easily out there for you. Okay. So if you got 50 points on the NASDAQ, but then all of a sudden, you know, today you take a, a 10 point dinger, which is, you know, are you still good for the week? Sure you are. But what if yesterday you took your, your trade off at 10 points and you take a 10 point dinger today? Well, mm -hmm. different, different ball game at that point. So you see the thing, that's the reason guys can't ever stay in this game long enough because they can't get those winners to push longer. And Josh had mentioned that, you know, what, what do we look for targets? What do we look to get out of the trade, et cetera, et cetera. Right now I'm looking for 60 at this point. I'm, I'm going to jump in front of it at 62 to get out of this trade. Um, yeah. And I'm pretty confident we're going to get there at this point. Um, right. And oh, we're moving stops too. On this push, lower mm -hmm. stops now mm -hmm. 93.75. Yep. Love it. 
And so far we've had, um, we've had up to 20 points of favorable excursion in this trade. Yeah, we're doing well here, we're, we're fine. Okay, gold. I watch GC a lot. Hey, so do I, I think. Yeah, um, gold touch on 180 days, high volume node this morning and backed off. Where would you enter if you were going to be 100 day 80? I don't know of that one. What's that mean? Well, that would be 90 day, 90 day or uh, six month. Oh, six month. Okay. So here's a 180 day chart. Yeah. Um, I mean, this, I, I'm, this is why, you know, gold showed up on our radar to be short gold, actually. Uh, the reason I'm more interested in the short than the upside is, I mean, one, we're, we're testing the upside. Now we could, we could break out of that, but the fact that we got up to an area of excess before and rejected again, that tells me that we're now establishing a bracket of trade. That's the thesis until we trade above 1350. You pull out to a daily chart. I want to look at this. I've been following every, every weekend I talk about gold in this. Now let's look at the longer term. Josh is absolutely correct. Okay. So squeeze that thing in is, can we go out? Is that the daily? How far it's, can it's you? It's a five year daily. What do you want? Yeah, that's what I want right there. So what, if you look, uh, squeeze it together a little bit more if you can for me, I'm sorry. That much or, or you want wider? Yeah, that's good. No, no, no. Squeeze it together so you okay. can see more, more years. More, see more years. Okay. Um, I, um, I, that's, that's as Is wide. that far you can go? Okay. Don't worry about it. I can anyway, go. We, we I have can, a bit. Here you go. Here's a weekly. Okay. There we go. That'll work. Okay. So um, give me a, the balance area. We have a balance area down there. You can see we've been balancing um, from uh, about 1377 there where, where the high volume is on that one all the way down lower so guys we've been going sideways in gold since 2014 or 13 okay right. and so right now we have been you if you look at all the consolidation for example in uh july august or april july of those yeah exactly right there okay all right so for example go look at april um 2017 there is look look at how we we consolidated at the highs up there okay um april 2017 yeah go, go all the way to the highs up there nope over to the left that's not april oh, i'm sorry april 2016 my fault yeah. yeah right there so and then what we do is we broke from balance we went down and tested the lower range and we sort of worked our way back up again and we balanced again <clears throat> Um, it looks like April of 2018, go figure, right? 2018, we balanced again. We we're looking for breakouts. People got stuck. Matter of fact, if you remember, Josh, we were looking long in there at that point in time. Yeah. We got caught. We got yeah, stopped out on that for thing. the breakout out yep. of the range. Exactly. So now we've rallied again back up here. We looks like we've back and filled a little bit. Now we've broken out from that. All right. Now, if you look, we are now into that. Um, if you go back to those balance areas, we're right in the middle of those balance areas right in here. Okay. So what we would be looking for to get long on here was either a pullback that holds where we broke out from, which seems to be that high volume node for, um, how, is that a, how many years back does that high volume? This is a 10 year. 10 year. So that's a 10 year POC right there. All right. If that doesn't hold, then we're going to just keep rotating back and forth until it wants to go. All right. Now, if we hold that or if we hold this area up here and start balance again, like we did in, in those previous Aprils, mm -hmm. then we will look for an opportunity to get long, to take out those highs and keep going. Um, and we can, you know, if you look off to the left back in 2000, um, 2012, was it? I'm going to go back here. Just look at that. Hang on, I got to look at something. I was just, just trying to keep watching the NQ here. Yeah, I am too. So I got one eye on it. Okay. All right. So if you go back into 2013, where we waterfall down there, we got a lot of thin spots up there. You can't see it here, but oh, we got a lot of thin spots. We got a lot of singles. Those are things that can get filled up pretty quickly. So. Yeah, we could see those on the long-term chart here. By the way, this is gold does a great thing. Gold does, you know, follows the auction principle really, really well. Yeah. Oh man, this trade is awesome. It is looking good. That's exactly isn't it? what I wanted. This is Come on, boys, keep going. Like I said, I'm at 62 to get out of this dog. 
<clears throat> so what JP was just talking about on this on this move down where there's some there's some thin spots to repair. Actually, if we go. So this is if we can break out of this, there's there's a level up here at thirteen ninety five. And then the next zone is fourteen seventy. Yeah. Look look at just above that those thin spots here. I I wanted to point out um that right chart. Can you blow that up? I want to show something. This is a really good example. We talk about how what the movement of the markets is. When I when I teach people how to, to trade. And like I taught my boys, I, I, you know, the idea is to teach them how markets work. Okay. Markets move and rest and move and rest. And that's a fa that's the easy way of saying they auction and then they find acceptance. They auction and they balance. They au There's lots of different terminology out there. Yeah. So if you look at the, in 2012, in June of 2012 there, Josh, the left side, you'll see we had this big balance area. And then we broke up out of that balance area. And then just look how the auction works. It's, it auctioned down, it balanced after it went, okay, after it popped, it auctioned down and balanced. And then it broke down and balanced. And then it came where? Right back to where we broke out, okay? That's why we look at high volume nodes because those are usually magnets. Now, what happens is it balanced there um, when it came back and then it broke way down at that right point. Now, you know, it's been Which auctioned. That, and that affirms the auction principle is that moves initiate from balance. Of course they do. Yeah. yeah. Also, and all markets do that. It's just not, you know, the gold market. It's just not the NASDAQ. All markets do that. If you look, you know, if you go back and, and you know, if you trade stocks, you know, you, you, uh, you probably have heard William O'Neill before. If one of William O'Neill's favorite trades is a high tight, bat, or a high tight sideways action, he calls it in his book, it's a high tight sideways action for like two or three weeks. Well, what is that? That's a balance area. And the move is going to happen out of that. And so what to do it would, in that case, in the equities, they're accumulating contracts and then they're just going to bust that thing out of there. It's a momentum situation, but on weekly charts, that means you're going to have some, you know, you're going to get some movement out of it. But, but remember you have to identify your time frames and all this stuff too. That just isn't, you know, I mean, these happen, you've got micro time frames, you've got uh, macro time frames. And we look at this on a daily, weekly chart, you can see these things easily. You can also see them on a five minute chart. Okay. It just depends on how active you want to be. Okay. Hey, we got EIA here and crude. First uh, move down. Yeah. So we're going to stick on just a little bit to see the first moves to the downside. All right. So again, we're looking for them to get down here, get trapped. If they get back above 53, then I'm actually looking long. Oh, this is perfect. They're moving lower. Yeah, they're cruising it. Trap them, man. Come on. Trap those come on, come on. We're almost to 70, uh, NASDAQ 70. Come on, boys. Just a few more. There we go. Oh, man. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Go. <clears throat> okay, so they got that naked POC. <clears throat> All right, stops now 77. Yeah. So OC, OCO 60, 77. Come on. Get that 62. That may just take 63. Yeah. All right, I'm out. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to. Be a jerk for a tick. <laughs> <laughs> this was a good trade. I, I, I'm I, want, it. I want the sixty, man. Come on. I'm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm out on this thing. This was a damn good trade. So. I'm, so. <clears throat> we're. It's gonna. They. They may they're get close. it. They're gonna fight it. Yeah. So. I'd All rather right. not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use uh, I below now as my risk. So. Okay. OCO sixty and. So there, I there. There you go. You're going to get it now. Come on, boys. Push I mean, you should. That's the, that's, the, that's the operating thing. We should yeah. based on this behavior. There's 62 halves, 62 quarter. Okay, I would have. Come on, gang. Come on. Come on.
it's worth it's worth it for me <laughs> to wait for the to wait. You, you want that extra twenty dollars don't you I want for that the contract <laughs> now you're making me feel bad i just got it i yeah i'm done that's a good trade this push here there doesn't, it I'll, is I'll get out if this push doesn't yeah I'll, <clears> here, here, here. there you go okay i would have been out at 62 but i didn't i got took it a little higher so what i gave up uh, okay i'm 30, out. 30 point or 30 dollars of out. contract so sweet there you go good trade all right gang so i don't know if we're going to get a second move move in crude on this move <laughs> yeah That's, this thing is cranking in we have it? just moved a dollar thousand dollars per contract in uh, all of five minutes and hopefully you're not holding long so yeah you're gonna <laughs> you're getting smoked so um you know the idea would be if they'd move lower and then came back so i mean i will i'll put alerts out here in the event that we may come back through here um but this kind of move like this on this kind of delta is potentially likely to continue so doesn't look like we'll get a second move trade today and that is okay um Yeah, both make money, but pigs get slaughtered. That's right. That's right, Peter. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, thanks for hanging out with us today. Uh, for those of you who are in our development community, we'll see you <clears throat> in Slack the rest of the day. We'll be, you know, seeing what opportunities can present in these products. I'm still watching <laughs> that 7145 in the NASDAQ. Um, we'll look and see if, if there's some structure opportunities inside of crude after they kind of get this out of their system. And uh, for those of you who are just joining us, just checking things out, uh, feel free to send us an email, team at tradewithprofile.com. Um, and uh, if, if you haven't taken a week and spent a week with us through our development process, we'd love to kind of work that work through with you and see how we can help um, move you towards consistent <clears throat> profitability. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for your participation. And we will see you next time. Peace. <laughs>